Hey guys, it's uh, the 12th of January, and praise God, we got into 2021. Uh, still a crazy world out there, so I hope you're praying, trust, and believe in God for His purposes to be fulfilled in your life, because that's the most important thing, that we're ready when He shows up and doing what He's doing. Uh, services were just awesome Sunday. We uh, did a message, I think, that uh, was needed to be heard as we begin this year. If you haven't heard it, please go back and listen to it. Uh, tenants you know, with the spike, we've kind of settled down a little bit, but we, we're slowly making our way back up to some better numbers and looking forward to that. I uh, want to let you know that uh, this coming Sunday, I'm beginning a new series of messages called Jesus in Genesis. And I really wanted you to come and be a part of this. You say, what do you mean Jesus is in Genesis? Listen, Jesus is throughout all the scriptures, all the word of God. Even he himself, he said it in John, in uh, excuse me, in Luke 24, when, when they were questioning his authority, here, here's what he said. He said, O oh, fools, slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken and beginning at Moses, he's talking about the five books of the Bible, Pentateuch, uh, the, the books of Moses, and beginning at Moses, and then all the prophets, you know, Isaiah, Jeremiah, he says, he expounded to them that in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. So he's saying throughout, the, from the Genesis on, you find me. In other words, this thing called progressive revel uh, uh, revelation in scripture of Jesus Christ. That he, you see him through every book of the Bible. It's like opening up a, a photo album. And if you know how to look at it and you understand the scriptures as, as a whole, then you begin to see a very clear picture of our Redeemer, the Lord Jesus Christ. So you don't want to miss this series. I, I'm not even sure how long it's going to go, but we're looking at Genesis, uh, at Genesis because if we did all the Old Testament, like he spoke, he's, we've seen himself. Yeah, we'd be there for the next 10 years, but we'll be moving back and forth with this series through different books as well in, in the days to come. But praise God, don't miss this series. It will enrich your walk. It'll enrich your appreciation of the Word of God, and it'll give you a, a, a kind of a, a, a new ability to look at scriptures in such a way that you see these pictures, these word pictures written on the canvas of scripture of Jesus revealing himself. Amen? Uh, a couple of things. First thing, Pray for your pastor. Me, yes. Pray for me. Uh, maybe you're not even a member of our church, but you watch our our, our video uh, uh, updates that we do weekly. Pray for your pastor, whoever that might be. Uh, I'm asking you at Believers Fellowship to pray for Pastor Tim, Pastor Matt, Pastor Gary, everybody on staff, uh, because, man, these are some crazy days in ministry. Uh, COVID-19 has just continued to ripple right along and affect everything we're doing. We would normally be planning different retreats, men's retreats, marriage retreats, couples retreats, all these things that have people ministering and fellowshipping and having revival in their life. We'd be doing conferences and uh, that's not happening. All right. Uh, we're doing it. Ministries changing the face of it in a lot of different ways. Some of it will continue that way and some will never go back to the other things that we did. So pray for us. It's, it's frustrating at times. And I can tell you honestly that I need your prayers. And so do these guys, because it's, it's, it's these difficult days. And we want to do everything we can to, to see you grow in Christ. It's our responsibility as your pastors to help you mature, to help you discover your gift and to use your gifts for the ministries that God has called you to. None of us are called to sit on the sidelines. You've heard me say that a middle, a million times. I want to say a special word to those of you who are, who are still not back in the in-person services. And this is not scolding, so don't turn me off just yet. It's a word to help you, I think, uh, get some clarity. Uh, one, I would say that if you're watching, if, if you're not in service, then you, that you make a dedicated choice to watch the live stream. You say, well, yeah, I watch on Sunday afternoon. That's not live stream. That's a recorded live stream. I want you to participate in the live stream because it helps you stay in the habit of being in church at a certain time. So watch the live stream when it happens, whether it's the nine o'clock at Magnolia for that service, or if you're a spring member, then you're watching that 1045 and you're participating, you're singing, you're watching, you're listening, you're not getting up and going eating breakfast and getting changed or whatever else. You're focused, you're, you're attentive, just as if you were in that service in person, that you would acknowledge the fact that you're there. We always tell people, let us know you're here. Hit to uh, share, uh, uh, say hi, give a wave or whatever you do on Facebook, that you would do that. It is uh, extremely and vitally important. We are increasing our capacity to be able just to go to our church website in the, in the future and just watch it there instead of having to go to Facebook or YouTube or something so that you're getting an actual live stream. So we're trying to make it better and even uh, uh, more simple for each and every one of you that are watching it. So first of all, get in the habit, if you got out of the habit, of being in church on time. Amen? Uh, on live stream, even as well as in person for those who are coming. But I'm also praying that uh, and asking for you to, I'm praying for God to give you, if you haven't yet, uh, what, what I would call a personal reentry plan that you you've kind of got it down to you know what your 
what your limitations are, what your pre-existing conditions are, what your immune system system is. So, what is it? And I'd say write it down. This is this is what I what I believe will be the the sign or the or the the word from God that it's time for me to get back to the in person services. And remember, I mean, in person services are important. The Bible says, "Do not forsake." the assembling of yourselves together. It means we're coming together. It's a physical coming together where we encourage, we edify, we minister, we, we pray for one another. I mean, so much happens in a live service that we worship together, we give together. Those are, those are all important. And I praise God for the live stream opportunities. But some of you may, you know, uh, maybe just kind of got settled. That's what I'm going to do from now on. Don't don't get tempted to do that if you're able to be in church. Another thing, if you have, if you have handicap issues or related issues where you can't get out of bed or get out of a situation, a hospital or, or whatever, rehab center. But we're talking about coming up with a, with a, with a, a, a real uh, plan. This is what I'm looking for. This is what I will believe to be the sign that God's given me that we should, that I should get back into to life, to life services at the church campus that I'm, I'm, that I'm a part of. What would that be? Well, I think one, obviously, I think would be a vaccination. If I, when I get my vaccination, then I'll be back in church. All right. So uh, once you have the vaccination, it really doesn't matter if somebody's wearing mask or not mask. All right, you have a vaccination. So uh, I, when I get vaccinated, I'll I'll, I'll get back in the church. Uh, maybe you're uh, maybe it's you're thinking that well maybe when the, I get the spike settles down because I don't want a vaccination. I, people are different on these things, and you know I don't believe the theories about some of these things about the vaccine. I'm continually trying to do research. I don't think there's a, a microchip hidden in it. I'm not sure that uh, uh, from what I've understood from both manufacturers that are out there, Pfizer and Moderna, that they haven't put any fetal cells or fetal materials in the vaccine. That's a big thing that's out there. Uh, but they've come out and said that it's not, that it's not part of it. I mean, I've heard something that literally changes your DNA. I don't know how that would happen. But anyway, that had to be something pretty potent. But, you know, if it's a vaccine, uh, that's something or if a spike is settling down, if that's what you're waiting for, uh, they, that might not be till you know, June, July of, of this year. Some are saying, well, I, you know, I'm waiting for the CDC to say it's okay that I can get back in a group. Uh, okay. Uh, CDC has already said it's, you can get out in public, you know, as long as you're distancing and wearing a mask yourself. So uh, maybe you're thinking that way when everybody wears a mask. Well, that's never going to happen. We're not going to be totalitarian at our church and tell people they must or they can't come to church. I mean, the Bible says, it has a different idea about reaching people and demanding people meet certain criteria before they can come to church. And I'm not going to go into that. I would just say, you wear a mask. I'll wear a mask if you if, I, if you approach me or if I approach you and you're wearing a mask, I'll make sure that I have a mask on. I always wear a mask during the invitation times. Uh, you've seen that if you're watching live stream. We do encourage, even though we don't demand, we encourage everybody as you're entering, as you're leaving, wear a mask. Many, when they sit down at their chairs, these are, we have six to eight feet between the aisles. Everybody's face where we get tremendous circulation systems. We sanitize the area all the time. We keep it clean. And I would say that if you are, a, if you are going out to eat in restaurants, if you are making your trip to Walmart at HCB or whatever it might be, or uh, you're going to work in, 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 in public venue, you're going to find a much cleaner and less risky environment at your church than you will ever find and ask people who work out in the public arenas and restaurants and HGB and places, they'll tell you that it's never going to be as clean and clear and, and, uh, and, 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 and acceptable as it is. It's going to be in something like your church where we do extra measures to carry out, to make sure that you're safe. So whatever it is, you know, uh, obviously the bottom line for all, all, all of us is uh, what is, what is the spirit leading me to do? And that's where you have to be discerning. All right. I, if I'm waiting for this, what is the spirit leading me to when I get a peace from God that I know this is when and now this is the time Then I need to get back in church. I can't let the reason and logic and CDC, they play a part in every decision that I've ever made in my life. But the ultimate thing is what do am I believing that God is leading me to do at this time? All right. Well, right now, what's he leading me to do? Uh, so ask God to make it so clear you can't miss it. Amen. Just you, you won't be able to escape it. And I think he'll do that. God loves you. 
Uh, and I say all that not to fuss at anybody. That's not the reason behind it. I think you know me well enough to know that by now. Your pastor loves you. He cares for you. And I'm taking this little nine or 10 minute time just to, to remind you that we're here. We all have a ministry together and we need to be in fellowship together. So if you're not in the live, if you're not in service, then be in the live stream, be with us on time, acknowledge that you're there and absolutely take time to hit that share button and let those of your family and friends know uh, that you care about them enough to send them a gospel message. Hey, I love you. Your pastor love you. Keep praying for us, as I said. I'll see those of you Sunday online or in or in person, but be here and let's celebrate Jesus as we look at the pictures and the portraits of Jesus in the book of Genesis. God bless you.